How's it going everybody? Dato Doi here and in today's video I wanted to go over the Dragon Ball Fighters World Tour which was announced a little bit ago and then just recently we got a lot more information on it as well as its own Twitch channel which I'm going to be linking in the description below. I believe this is where all future big tournament Dragon Ball Fighters stuff will be streamed so it's definitely worth going over there and giving a follow like I have done here. Uh, CEO is all going to be here. Uh, we'll talk about that a little more later but if you're going to be watching CEO, you might as well be giving this a follow right now. Now I do have this YouTube video pulled up. This is just the World Tour announcement. Uh, it goes over a little bit of what they plan to do. Uh, their Dragon Ball system, in which they have uh, everything. They, they have the seven Dragon Balls, uh, and it does announce the uh, individual places where you'll get them. So you have one in the USA, one in the UK, France, Australia, Mexico, Singapore, and Japan. Honestly, I think that's a really good mix of locations. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, that's uh, you're covering a lot of ground there, uh, and the placements of the Dragon Ball is is something you definitely have to take into consideration here, uh, because the holder, the winner of these Dragon Balls, does indicate, does dictate, I should say, what the format of the Grand Finals for the World Tour is going to be, and again, that's something we'll talk about when we get to the site with more information. Uh, starting in June, it uh, does start at CEO, as you can see here. Tournament begins June 29th, which is a couple days away at this point, at CEO. A uh, big tournament coming down here, uh, and it's going to be super hype. But, yep, that's it for that YouTube channel page. Now we can go on to where the, most of the information lies uh, on the World Tour site. Again, link will be in the description if you want to read along, or if you just want to close the video and read it by yourself. Uh, I am going to be breaking down this and the Tekken World Tour, which I thought it was going to take after more, uh, but it appears they're going in a different way. So, let's talk about those Dragon Balls, because again, they are super important. So, here's the tour structure. The tour is divided into several type of events, so these are the kind of things you can look for as to what is going to make up the bulk of the tour. So we have the Saga events, and these are uh, where you compete against the strongest player from the world. Uh, this is just the different places for a chance at winning a spot as a finals, as well as a coveted Dragon Ball. If you're a first time Saga event winner, you'll obtain the Dragon Ball, as well as your secure your ticket to the finals. That pretty much makes sense. If you get a Dragon Ball, you're going to the finals. And then we have here, repeat Saga event winners will obtain a Dragon Ball, and the next eligible non-qualified player will receive a ticket to the finals last chance qualifier. Let's go over what that means. Basically, let's say Sonic Fox, Hook Gang God, both make it to the finals in the USA. Hook Gang God wins, Sonic Fox goes over to Mexico, Hook and God goes over to Mexico as well. If Hook and God wins again, he'll get both Dragon Balls, but now Sonic Fox will also qualify to go to the next event as well. Uh, so that's obviously a good system. <laughs> it would kind of suck if losing to somebody already in the tournament meant that you don't get to go either, uh, but that's not going to happen here with this system in play. Now, the finals event. This is where the Dragon Balls really come to shine. This is going to be a two-day event uh, that features Dragon Ball Fighters player from the tournament season battling for possession of the seven Dragon Balls. Uh, so obviously it's going to be like they hand it over to each other uh, and as you climb up, the less people they're going to be, meaning the more Dragon Balls you're going to have on your possession. So Grand Finals is going to be like one has four and the other has three, for example, and then whoever wins gets all seven. But that could change because what if, theoretically, some crazy madman travels across the entire world and is the unchallengeable best at Dragon Ball Fighters and has earned all seven? In that case, the format actually changes because... It says here, however, should a single player win all seven Saga events and obtain all seven Dragon Balls, the format of the finals will fundamentally change. The player possessing all seven Dragon Balls will obtain a bye to Grand Finals, guaranteeing at minimum second place. So if you get all seven Dragon Balls, you're at least getting second place, which means you're getting, you're getting some money either way. But that's not even all, because if that was it, I would say that's kind of not even that great for getting all seven. But... In this case, the Grand Finals becomes, it's not even just a normal match. If you get all seven, the guy that makes it to you has to beat you in a first to 10 set for the title of Grand Champion. 10 game, oh man, 10 games is a lot, okay? That is a long time. They are going to be competing with the best. If you earn all seven, you're the best at this game. I think unquestionably. So if someone can beat you in a first to 10, then they're the best. That's pretty much how it works. There is no, there is no chance in 10 set. There is no chance in 10 first to tens. Now as far as the schedule for this tournament goes, obviously Saga 1 is going to be at CEO on the 28th through the 1st, and um, that's only a 5,000 prize pool bonus, uh, so it's not all positive here. Uh, there's some stuff to cover that the prize pool I think for this is just a little too low, and that goes for pretty much all of these. Um, I don't know, I just wish Dragon Ball Fighters has been very successful 
And if you want that esports pull, I think you really have to reward these players for coming out and actually, you know, playing their hardest. Um, so the prize money could definitely be something for a point of contention. Definitely something I think they should look into raising. Uh, I get it's the first time this event is being held, but I think Dragon Ball Fighters has more than proven its uh, success already. Uh, so definitely, look, I would definitely say look into bumping these numbers up. Uh, Saga 2 is versus fighting uh, Birmingham, UK, 720 through the 22nd. That's going to be happening actually relatively soon after CEO. Saga 3 Ultimate Fighting Arena, 831st in France. That's going to be really cool. Nice to see an event happening in France like this. All of these are pretty much $500 pop bonus, so I, I don't feel like covering that for each of them. Uh, Thunderstruck, 1006. That's actually a pretty long time in between. Uh, and then 1013, wow, SEA Major. Uh, this is going to be one to watch. I definitely think if you're looking for one of the best sagas, this is probably going to be one of them. Or at least most interesting. Uh, a tournament taking place in Asia is going to have a lot of competition that we just haven't seen yet. Uh, and this is one of the big draws of a tournament like this. I think Dragon Ball Fighters has done a great job of bringing together a lot of communities. Uh, and I'd like to see more people from just all over the world take uh, taking part of this. And then, of course, we have our finals uh, back in the USA for this one. And this one's actually 25000 Uh, I don't know. I still want to see that bumped up. It's not enough because that's going to be that's going to be divvied out to everybody. And if you think about it, if you come in fourth place, that's really almost not even enough to pay for traveling fees. And at that point, you're the fourth best in the world. And then you have Saga 6 and Saga 7. I actually don't know. I don't, I don't know what these are for, actually. Uh, maybe these are the online events that they were talking about. There will be online events if you want to take, if you want to, if you want to do those from home. Other than that, there's really not too much left on this site to cover. Uh, just some media, which great photo gallery. That's awesome, dude. Uh, we have the rules, and the rules aren't too big. It's just, uh, it's pretty much your basic stuff. But yeah, I'm actually surprised they went with more of an NVCI thing. Uh, definitely not as bad as MVC. I will cover that in a future video. The Infinity, I don't even remember what it's called. Battle for the Stones for MVCI was just an awful way to run a tournament. Uh, and it doesn't look like Dragon Ball Fighters is going that far in that direction. We just have the Dragon Balls, and it's not confirmed that any one of them gives you an advantage over your opponent. Uh, they're mostly just used as a marketing tool, I think. And uh, yeah, it's just a cool marketing promotion stuff. MVCI really affected the gameplay of it, and that's what I was afraid to see with something like Dragon Ball Fighters. But doesn't look like that's happening. Overall, I'm very excited for this Pro Tour. Uh, Pro Tours come with a lot of benefits for the game, as well as uh, you know, just for, even if you're not a competitor, uh, it's great. It's great to watch, and also it does a lot of good for the game. It promotes it, makes more DLC happen, yada yada. It does a lot of good stuff. Let me know down in the comments if you're hyped for the World Tour, or if you're even going to be competing in the World Tour. If you're going to be competing, let me know down below, because uh, that's super That's super awesome, and I want to wish you good luck. Um, other than that, just let me know your thoughts on the World Tour, uh, what you think about the rules and the format and stuff. And uh, while you're down there, if you like this video and channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I'm Dr. Doya, and I'll see you in the next video.